Hey YouTube, um, today we are going to look at 9600 board. Uh, a lot of people will say this is quite a hard thing to get into, you need specialized hardware or you need a uh, special radio to do 9600 board. But I'm going to try and show you probably one of the easiest ways you can get into 9600 board radio without too much specialized hardware. So it all comes down to using the digirig. I've got a cable that uh, Digirig made up specially for me. Hopefully they start selling these cables because it'll be super handy. Um, uh, but what the Digirig is, is USB-C to audio and serial, uh, and it also has PTT. So basically this plus this cable is all you need to connect your radio up to do 9600 board if it's a fairly modern radio if it has the 6 pin mini din data connector so i've got the icom 7100 which has that data connector i've got the digirig with the mini din to audio jack cable and i will plug this in via USB C to a computer then we're going to use direwolf like we always do to act as our 9600 board tnc let's see how it goes our direwolf config like before is quite simple the main difference is we've set the modem to 9600 board and for the digirig to trigger the ptt we need to set it to the digirig serial port and set it to rts and it's going to use the rts serial line to control the radio's ptt at least with the icom 7100 if you want to use the 9600 board data port you have to trigger the PTT using the data port and not using CAT control. So that's why we use a Digirig to control PTT. So in terms of radio configuration, we have a couple of things that we need to do. Uh, first off, we need to be in FM data. Um, but more importantly, at least on the 7100, we need to go under connectors. And then right down the bottom here is 9600 board mode, and we need to make sure that's on. Once we have that set, we should be all good to give this a go. Uh, so I'm at my favorite lookout again. It's a little bit far away for 9600 board. The signal quality isn't great, but we're going to give it a go. Um, we have two things working for us. Uh, we're going to use FX25, um, and we're going to lower the uh, window length to make shorter packets to try and get as many through as possible. So let's give that a go. So once again, we're using Direwolf as our software modem, and we're using KISS Attach. Um, and KISS params to configure everything, and we're just doing IP across. So for this test, we'll be using... <laughs> for this test, we'll be doing exactly what we did before with a little web server with the same image, and we'll see how quickly it takes to load. So I've already got everything configured. I've done a quick um, test, but we're gonna jump into Firefox. We're gonna clear the cache and then see how long this takes to, to go. 192.168.1.1 Let's see how long it takes. While that's loading, I wanted to mention a little bit about the Minidin 6-pin data connector. That's used for 9600 board and also 1200 board. But importantly for 9600 board, the voltage that we need to get out of the digi rig and into our radio is 0.2 volts to 0.5 volts. I found 0.4 volts to work the best with the ICOM 7100. You want to be careful about setting this up because you don't want to damage your rig or overmodulate the signal. So it's important to measure that. Um, I found that at 20% volume I get 0.4 volts. And that should work across most digi rigs, but it's probably best to measure it yourself and double check. So 
just over a minute our web page is loaded and I think that's a pretty good result. Huge improvement over 1200 board and it's great fun to play around with. While DigiRig aren't selling these cables as a stock item, yeah, it's worth just reaching out to them if you want to grab one. Or you can build your own. It's not too hard to create these cables. Six pin mini DIN connectors are found at most electronic stores and uh, all you need is some TRRS 3.5mm jacks, which are also fairly common. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below.